there and welcome to the Read Local Show presented by Lit Carnival and me, your host, Toy Thomas, author, blogger, and reading advocate. I am so excited to share today's guest with you. Karen Jones says, my words create worlds. I open doors. My ancestors were storytellers, as am I. Let's meet Karen Jones. How are you doing today? I am I am doing well. We are we are here fighting the wind and fighting the pollen and I'd much rather be talking to you. So, I'm good. I'm so glad to hear that. Yes. The wind has been quite a challenge today, so I feel you on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we kind of dive into things, I always like to give people an opportunity to just to kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. I have an interesting and varied background, was born and raised in Virginia Beach, spent summers in North Carolina, which is where my book is set. Um, I taught school for 10 years. I graduated from UVA. Um, I, yeah, Wahoo I, I, I actually went to UVA um, Wise. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, Wahoo Wah, man, a fella who. This is great. Um, I, I taught school and then uh, when I moved up to New Jersey for a while, I became a corporate banker and I was a speech writer for the bank and their shareholders and this and that. And then I came back home and I was doing some teaching and some rock and roll radio and a local news anchor came into the studio and said, you're pretty good. And I went, well, thanks. And then she said, we have an opening for a weather check on TV. And I went, Okay, so <laughs> I went in and I did this goofy audition and doggone if they didn't like me. And I got hired um, on local ABC affiliate and I was on TV for about 20 years having a ball. And but all the time I had this book in the back of my mind all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is an amazing story. I love it. Wow. Um, <laughs> I also have a background in education. And so I, I get kind of how that can lead you to other things. And so I'm very um, excited about just kind of some of the things that we have in common, obviously college and things like that. So well, I always say, if you can teach, you can do anything. I'm not. Yes. Kidding. Yeah. Yes. All right. So I am going to dive into the first segment of the show that I call on the bookshelf. As a reading advocate, I feel like everyone should read more, but I especially feel like a lot of writers um, at some point, you know, had to be readers in their life. So I like to see, you know, where that fits for you. So the first question that I have is, what was the last thing you read? I'm reading, I don't even know the author's <laughs> name for, I, I'm reading some kind of murder mystery detective whatever. And that's, for me, that's brain candy. It gives me a break from thinking. It gives me a break from reality. They're just very simple um, books on Kindle Unlimited, you know? So right now I'm in the process of just taking a break and not delving into anything serious. So. Yeah, I can relate to that. I uh, actually run a book club where we will read one work of fiction and one work of nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of hit it hard with the nonfiction last year. So I'm being very selective about that. Oh. This year I'm reading a lot of just, like you said, brain candy kind of stuff this year. And, uh, and you know, that's okay because we're gearing up for another couple of years of political stuff. And I got to have my brain candy because exactly. you know what I'm saying? Nah. Exactly. <laughs> we're all going to be needing breaks. So. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> So since you did mention this already, I want to expand on it. Um, for me, I totally understand the appeal of reading an ebook. It's convenient. It's inexpensive. Um, you can collect a whole bunch of them. But is that your preferred reading platform? Or um, even though you might read ebooks, do you prefer print, hardcover, audio? What is your preferred um, reading format? Okay, for brain candy, brain candy, it's Kindle all the way. I mean, it's easy. Boop, boop. For something that I want to really settle into, I'll get a hard copy. For instance, one of the best nonfiction uh, narrative books I've ever read is The Wave by Susan Casey. And it goes and she 
threads the story by following the big wave surfers like Laird Hamilton looking for rogue waves and big waves, but she also weaves the science of uh, the changing climate into it and why that's affecting seas and more rogue waves are showing up. So you get in a really good dose of, of a story, but a lot of science. And for those books that I'll go back and you know, I, I want them in my hand. Yeah. So I can underline and I can do sticky notes and, you know, yeah. I'm old school on that. That's cool. Yeah. I, I, I love that idea of <laughs> having something and you're like putting notes in it and you're making your own and it, you really, you become like a part of that more than just reading the words, but actually like wow. having an experience. Okay. I have one more question. Um, <laughs> this one I have noticed has been kind of a, hot button question um, with some yeah. writers in the past okay. so no judgment here I just ask the questions just to see what the answers are yeah. do you write book reviews no okay I hate to review somebody's book I'd rather be beat with a wet noodle than review somebody's book it's just and 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 what do you say and what if you don't like it Oh no, what do you say? No, girl, uh-uh. I can't, I can't do it. I'm not gonna break anybody's heart. There you go. Okay, that's legit. I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> I I do I do write book reviews, but I understand like the hesitation yeah. why it's not something for everyone. So oh, I yeah, that. no, I just I just I I've done it and it's I don't enjoy it. So yeah, life's too short. Okay, very oh. nice. All right. So now that we've gotten to know a little bit about you, the reader, let's find out about you as a writer. So okay. this is the segment that I call the open book. So um, this one we've kind of mentioned a little bit before, you know, we, we got into the interview. Um, it's about your publishing path. Um, what is your publishing path? How did you choose it? How is it going for you? The publishing path has been torturous, my darling. Um, <laughs> I, oh, a million years ago, like back in the early 90s, I wrote this deeply flawed book, Kingdom of Hearts. Okay. Well, the, the agent that got it for me was in cahoots with the publisher in Canada. Anyway, it was a huge scandal. It was, wow. it was a for-profit thing. It was so big that the FBI got involved. Wow. Uh, okay, so that was my first adventure. Okay. Then, um... I have written a book called Up the Bestseller Lists, which is a, a book that's traditionally published, traditional publisher. And mm -hmm. that was in the early 90s. I co-authored that. Okay. Then I wrote Death for Beginners. And Death for Beginners, and I go around the country and talk about it. And it has legs because it is a book about how to plan for your death. I had oh, my goodness. I have book. that book. But, do you really? I Death have that book on my show. I, well, and you know why I wrote it, right? Because Regina's sister got killed and the family didn't know what to do. And they were trying to take advantage of her and I almost got locked up at the funeral home. I got so mad at them and I wrote it so nobody, everybody can plan ahead of time and nobody will ever, ever get ripped off. And do you know what? I'm, City of Virginia Beach is still having me come around and do stuff for seniors with that book. So yeah. That's that, book, that book is very insightful. So um it was, it, it did teach me a lot. And like, it actually started a conversation with me and my husband. That's been like this ongoing Excellent. battle that we have because he doesn't want to talk about it, but I'm like, babe, Regina. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Where did you pick up the book? Did you buy it at the Slover library? I think, I think I did. I have a picture of you and me with that book. I'm going to look, okay, I'm going to look back at my computer because I have a picture of somebody who looks a lot like you at the Slover, and this was years ago, some kind of writing conference or something, and somebody took a picture. So if I can find it, I will send it to you. Yes, because I know I have the book. I'm like, <laughs> all right. That's so, let, so let, weird. Let, okay, yeah, random. Like, all right. Yes. All right. So let's get back. I had more questions. <laughs> um, do you keep a journal? No. Do not keep a journal. Just, um, I never have. I've written stories, mm -hmm. but I've never kept a journal. I do, well, it's kind of a journal, but it's if I see a clever turn of phrase or some kind of quote that I so want to remember. Um, 
and and so I have a little book that I'll I'll you know like gems, but I don't journal. Mm-mm. No, my my I journal through my stories. <laughs> I, I I I think I'm like that as well. I remember someone asking me this question, and I was like, no, I've never been able to do it. No. And then they did tell me they're like, don't you keep a blog? And I was like, well, I guess that's the closest I've ever come to journaling. <laughs> Oh yeah, seriously. No, for me, it's it's just too much work. I'd rather write. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think, um, oh yeah. So the last question that I have, and this is another one that it's not necessarily a hot button topic, but I do find that there's a lots of different opinions on this for writers. Uh-huh. So how do you feel or and or do you use writing prompts? <laughs> Um, nah. I mean, I, I have a huge collection of them and they are so doggone funny, but I use them when I'm teaching writing classes. Okay. I use them for my students, but as for myself, I, I don't need a prompt. I just, I don't, I just, I like writing. So it's, it's not easy for me because whenever I'm getting ready to start a new book, my husband finds me on the floor in the kitchen, rearranging the Tupperware. <laughs> which I will do for hours before I sit down and write. And sometimes it's an agony to get your rear end in the chair. You know that as a writer, it's like, oh, but um, I don't need prompts. uh -uh. You know, it's funny because I have been like, like you, I have several different books about writing prompts and Mm -hmm. I've gone to like different seminars where people have talked about prompts and out of all of the things I've written, only one thing that I ever like wrote and submitted was from a prompt. Yeah. And it was actually for like a fundraiser kind of thing. So even though it was a prompt, I was mainly doing it for that. But that's the only thing that I've ever like put out into the world that was based on a prompt. Yeah, for me, just sitting around and 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 going and picking up some prompts and writing. I mean, I've written all of my life. I wrote corporate speeches. As, as an educator, all you do is write. Yeah. Uh, and TV, all we did was write. I mean, we had video, but you had to write everything. You had to tell your story. So for me, it, it's it doesn't. It's not necessary, I guess. Okay. Okay. All right. I like that. (laughs) All right. So now we've gotten to know you as a reader, as a writer, and now I want to talk about some of your work. All right. So today I want to talk about the Summer of Grace. Excellent. (laughs) What is, would you say, like the major themes or topics within the Summer of Grace? A Summer of Grace, sorry. Um, It is a coming of age. So you can, uh, it is for older teens, like high school, high school, all the way to grandmas. All right. I have a huge range of people reading it. Um, It is about coming of age. It's about overcoming adversity. It is about finding out and believing in yourself. It is about reaching out and letting others help you. And that there really is a way to get out of almost anything there's a there's a way out somehow just keep looking and searching I like that especially for you know a book that you know is kind of coming of age because I think a lot of times um younger readers that that younger that target that younger audience Mm -hmm. can sometimes feel like they don't have a lot of choices and we think about it when you're that age your parents make all your decisions yes you you might not realize that so I think putting that in a work of fiction is a wonderful way to like reach people. Okay. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) So um, is any part of the book autobiographical? (laughs) Anne Lamont has a quote that goes something like this. If you had wanted to be written kindly about perhaps you should have behaved better. (laughs) That answer your question? Um, Yes. Um, You can go to my website, kjwriter.com, where it says books, you know, there's a summer of grace and it has a drop down and it says inspirations for the summer of grace. You will see the farmhouse. You will see Miss Willie, who is like one of the grandmas that has been a whole bunch of Grandmas went into the one grandma. You will see a picture of of Grace and Jane. And that is my cousin, Jane, who said, you better use my name. And and, uh, I basically was Gracie. My home life was not good, uh, although it appeared perfect to everyone. 
and my parents appeared beautifully perfect. They were not. They were deeply flawed individuals, and I had a hard time at home. That being said, I went to the farm on during the summer in North Carolina, and I always wanted uh, to just stay there, and I never got to. I had to come back here and, you know, put up with a bad home situation, so I wrote the way I would have liked it to turn out to be. How about that? Talk yeah. about some healing. Yeah. Yeah. So some of it's true. Some of it's not. I mean, you know, Aunt Viola and her big teeth. I never had an Aunt Viola with big <laughs> teeth. Um, I did have Aunt Martha and Uncle Ben with Aunt Martha and her bosoms. And uh, I asked her daughter, I said, is it okay? She was like, yes, please. You know, so some of the, some of the characters are real. Yeah. That's and so some are just totally made up. <laughs> but no, that, I mean, that's really cool. I, I feel like anything that you write as a writer is going to have some elements of yourself in it, but, yes. but have something, you know, that, I mean, you're creating it. So there has to be part of you in it, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yes, this is, uh, this is how I would have liked for things to have turned out. And Jane and I did get into a, a whole lot of trouble. It was awesome. Okay, good. And we were just youngins down in Carolina, you know? That's great. You know, there's something to be said about growing up in the country. You know, like you just, I think, and I'm not knocking people who grew up in the cities, but yeah. they have those experiences where you're out in the fields and getting in trouble and stuff. Like, it's so, special. So good. <laughs> All right. So the last question that I have for you is, let's say um, a book club was going to read this mm -hmm. book <clears throat> what kinds of discussions or questions do you think would be ideal um for for a book club to have about this book well one of the things i included in the very back of a book in the book is and i don't know if it attached itself to the e-reader or not but it's a list of questions for book clubs it's a reader's guide perfect yeah so the back of the book has a reader's guide with about 15 different questions in it I will say that for it's a perfect book club book I've already been to a couple of book clubs it locally I visit man I just come, come right in and sit down one club made a southern dinner for me we all had, like, there was like okra, there was like tomatoes with either salt or sugar. There was some fried chicken bits. There was cornbread and biscuits. Oh, just what somebody even brought brown hound calamity cookies. And you guys actually talked about a book? <laughs> yeah, well, and there was wine. So we were eating and talking. And <laughs> the great thing about a book club is that some of these, some of these women underlined parts. They said, now talk about this. Now talk about that. And even if, and I've done a book club in Texas and we all zoom together. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm available for, you know, for zooms or to just, you know, if you're in the area of 757, then I can, I can certainly come by and, and meet everybody and, and talk. So it's a perfect book club book. It really is. Lends itself to it. I love it. All right. Um. So that was mostly the questions that I had about um, your, your book specifically. Mm -hmm. And so I always like to kind of end things on what I call like a silly note, um, kind of wrap it up. We got to know you as a reader, a writer. We got to learn a little bit about your work. And now it's just time to have some fun. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm down. Let's go. All right. So the first question is, um, knowing your background in um, journalism and broadcast journalism, what either... I guess say what news show or news event would you like to have, would you like to have covered? The Clinton scandal. Ooh. Because I met him. I, yeah, I met, I mean, I was lucky enough to interview Colin Powell, dream come true. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, rock stars and this and that, but Clinton, when you met him, he just, he, he, you were the only person in the room. He's so charismatic. And I would have, I would like to have even handedly covered that story. I would have also liked to have covered tail hook. You probably too young to remember that there was this huge scandal 
all the aviators, you know, they uh, once a year they get together and just blow off steam and be bad boys. And there were some women who came along, some junior officers who came in and blew the whistle on them and said that they were offended. And I'm like, girl, these are naval aviators, what you expect. And so I would have loved to have, have been able to even handedly uh, cover that story because there was a lot of hysteria around it that didn't need to be. Okay. You know, yeah. Yeah, I don't have to look up um you call it this tail hook. Just call it tail hook. All right, I'll have to Google that. All right. That's Navy tail hook. Yeah, it was quite the scandal. It's like those guys have been getting together, having a big party once a year for forever. So, you know, it was just, I don't it wasn't covered evenly, I think. Okay. <clears throat> so the next one is a never have I ever. <laughs> Oh, so Lord. the way this works is I'm going to state it. So if you if you did it, then you'll raise your hand and explain it. But even if you didn't do it, we might talk about it anyway. <laughs> All right. Oh. So <clears throat> never have I ever bombed at a public speaking event. Never. Not once. Oh, you are. I have. <laughs> I have. I just I have a ham bone that is bigger than my whole body. And you can put me up in front of everybody. And I, I never have. And that's why in live TV, I think I was so good. I was very fast on my feet. Now I've done some terrible things, but uh, <laughs> not, not bombing and public speaking. I, I don't know. My hand bone's too big, I think. Well, that's good. I, I would say the one time it happened to me, I didn't, it wasn't so much that I totally bombed. It was like, I was thought everything was going and something else happened. And like nothing that I said mattered at that point. And I was like, well, oh, yeah, yeah. And audiences, you can get some really, really hard audiences. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So the last fun question that I have. Would you rather, which again, you know what? <laughs> when I say, <laughs> so I, I'll just say that I picked these questions at random and I'm like, I feel like the broadcast mojo was working in your favor when these questions came up. <laughs> so this, this is the question. It says, would you rather write the obituary or give the eulogy? Wow. Mm -hmm. Um. I, th hmm. I think it would have to depend on the person and I'm not... I'm not trying to weasel out of it, but um, it would, I think it would depend on the person because in some eulogies, I think you can be a smart aleck, which I excel at. And um, others, you would want to make sure you did it right. For, for my husband, if I were giving a eulogy for my husband, I would want to write it. But if I was given a eulogy for my sister, I'd write the obituary. But for my sister, uh-uh, girl, I'm standing right up there. We'll have some fun. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it would depend on the person. Okay, that's an acceptable answer. <laughs> well, thank you, madam. <laughs> well, that was just us being silly. And I had a wonderful time. I did too. You and your work. So we are going to wrap things up. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. My pleasure. This was fun. Let's do it again. I know, definitely. So before we do sign off, go ahead and just tell everyone where they can find you and your work online. KJWriter.com. That is the website. KJWriter.com. You can go there. You can get in touch with me. You can read about the, the book. Uh, you can look at pictures, um, you know, can find where to buy the book because we have it for sale and you know, at Books A Million or Amazon or, or whatever. And you can shop to see which is least expensive. OK. All right. That sounds like a plan. So uh -huh. um, for the viewers, be sure to stick around because Karen does have a teaser for us to share. And for my Patreon subscribers, be on the lookout because she's got something special just for you. So until next time, guys, stay safe, be blessed, and have fun reading. Bye.